Let's try it now. So I'll wait for you guys to chime in to see if we're connected on all the platforms that we pay for. So we'll see if that's what's working. And I'll wait for my trustees to let me know um, where we are. And it looks like we are rolling, rolling, rolling. But I wanted to first start saying, oh, my God, you look so handsome. Nobody knows who I'm talking to. <laughs> he's, he's probably like, she needs to cut that out pretty soon. She's going to get in trouble. <laughs> to go that way. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> you are muted. There's a purpose for that because I got to give you this whole pump up. This whole pump up. I got to do this because I'm so honored. Para todos ustedes que, que me conocen, you know that my, my goal, once I recovered, once I was able to speak again and to travel and navigate and, and become the advocate that I really believe in my heart and soul I was born to be, it was so important for me to break barriers. So important for me to break barriers. But it so happens that I meet this young man um, by the name of Eric Ellers. And um, he is the son of one of my dearest, dearest friends. But that's not what gets him any space or clap for me. It's the kind of man he is. And it's beautiful to know that we don't have to reach to all kinds of different places. Our heroes are right here in our community. There are people doing wonderful things day in and day out. And for me, I'm going to try to get through this show without any tears because I really admire this young man who's 26 years old, um, who's one or two siblings, um, who loves his mom, who loves his dad, who is an independent guy, um, who's funny, uh, who's taught me a bit about wine. Um, we all know that um, I don't know my wine very well, um, but I do like to, to drink it. But I'm going to bring him up. <laughs> so we're going to bring up um, my buddy. And I'm, I'm trying, Eric, I'm going to put you up here on screen, but I cannot promise that I'm not going to cry. Okay. So um, because I'm so touched and honored that you said yes. So ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado on our screen, my co-host for today, here he comes. Yo. Here he comes. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. He's coming. Am he, I? It's, it yeah. says, I'm okay, there it is. There it is. <laughs> So took a minute. Took a minute. Took a minute. Took a minute. Hi, Eric. Hello. How are you? I'm wondering. You look so handsome. Uh, I just did this fresh. This is yesterday. I decided uh, just do this. Okay, this is the outcome. Not gonna complain. <laughs> there it was a day. I was dealing with three things. I was dealing with yard work, and the great god of spring decided, nah, that you suffer specifically because allergies. I got my own medication. Eric, the reason why I wanted to have you a part of my my um my love for your presence on the earth, if I may say that, um, is the way that you have embraced me. And we have conversations and you make me laugh and you destroy every movie that I, I got worked on. You destroy every movie. I'm like, does it work that way, Eric? It's like, well, let me just let you know a thing it's or two. It's called brutal honesty. <laughs> that we need it every now and again. And you sure are good at giving it to me. Eric, tell me a little bit about you. Whatever you want to share with me. Oh, uh, let's see. I'm currently 26 year, uh, years old. Currently working at a grocery store, Whole Foods Department. Um... Right now, just kind of doing my own thing, chilling aside from work, um, catching up on a few things here, there. But and... you, have, you have big aspirations, buddy. Yeah, I'm, I want to work to be a kind of comic book artist, or at the very least, a writer. I enjoy storytelling, and it's kind of where I started. My dad just kind of put comics and superhero stuff in front of me. And I worked my way from there. 
Oh, so dad is dad is the one who got you into this. He started it. Mom, I wouldn't say push it a little more, but she did assist. I just forgot specifically how. It's been a millennia. Just <laughs> I will give half and half. We'll give them a little she, bit of credit. She gets credit. <laughs> She gets credit. Okay. Eric, um, we want to talk about autism and we want to break a lot of barriers that, that people have. And when I met you, I thought, Lord, if he only gave me the chance one time to bring him on the show, but I did not have the guts to ask him personally. There's a, there's a simple question. A friend of yours like, Hey, you're, you're, friend of mine wants to do this thing with you like I, and i hooked you up. i was like you know what asking goes a long way just <laughs> just ask i was totally i am so honored so so honored because i know how much you have to offer the world and i know that potentially one day i may want to ask you for a job i'm not sure how qualified i'm going to be by then but i may want to get a job under the ellers um corporation tell us a little bit about when you hear people talk about autism because we're gonna break barriers here left and right i'm gonna give you some research that i've gotten that i want to you know like hit myself over the head with stomp on it all of this kind of stuff and you're gonna tell me yeah you're gonna tell it yeah. like it is um when do you tell people you are autistic do you tell people it doesn't matter do I don't bring it up unless it's like natural in the conversation. I don't think it's a very this this is me specifically. People are built different, but mm -hmm. I don't do it unless like okay, if you're going to ask me, I'll say it. I don't like bringing it up cuz I do not think it matters. Oof. Like just take me as is. Take me as is. If that question rings in your mind, I will say yes or no. It's like do you want to know what spectrum? Yeah, I'll tell you. So, and as you said, it does not matter to you. To me specifically. And where do you think you got that? Because when I speak to other people, I was just having a conversation uh, five hours ago with someone who is pretty well known and we'll keep him out of the conversations. Can he's coming after you? I told him, no, my boy, Eric is coming first. You can come letter. And he has lots of le letters behind his name and all that kind of thing. He's super mad and super cool. Um, but I said, I want, I want Eric to tell it from a younger version. Um, also, and he said he wished he would have made that decision. That he spent a lot of time saying to people, "Hey, my name, my name is such and such. I'm autistic." And he's like, "What a huge mistake I made!" It's. I think it's also due to the fact that I was raised a certain way to have some form of independence. I was very. How I learned was trial and error. And that didn't, me saying, oh, this doesn't matter within the conversation didn't come till like years later. I didn't know I had autism until like, I want to say probably like early middle school. Either it was there, I was put into a class that would help me with this. I just didn't know why. I saw it as like a tutoring program, which it was. That but makes it wasn't a until lot of sense. Like, it wasn't until like, I think maybe mid, late middle school, somewhere in that ballpark. I'm like, oh, I have this. Um, This is why this I have, or I go such and such. It's like, oh, that makes sense. Like so, that explains that and that. So you getting a diagnosis, you know, I have a brain injury. So not until we figure it out. With the, air it, quotes, yes. Yeah, yeah. The, the diagnosis. The air quotes. Yeah. It made sense to you. Then you were like able to say, oh, this is why I see things this way or that way. Or was it more of a. Eh? A little bit of both. It's more of a, oh, that explains why this and this. And then soon after it's like, OK, cool. Moving on. OK, cool. Moving on. OK. Yeah. How did your how did your parents? I mean, because obviously it takes active parents to want to engage in the life of their children and say, no, we're going to go all the way. We're going to help our son identify whatever it is that he or she, in some cases, need 
Um, did you feel like mom and dad were right on top of it with you and, and making sure that you got everything you needed, if needed, was a word that you felt that applied? Let's see. My mom was a lot more active in the um, like school part and getting help. My dad was more active in me, like just kind of doing things and learning other things. But when it came to school, I think mom was a little more part of that because she worked with kids. She's um, back then she was a teacher at a kindergarten. Now she's moved up. I don't know, moving on up. I, I don't know. She's principal now. I don't know what the status is. <laughs> she's mom. She's she mom. Was, she went from mom to mother. I don't know what the status is. What is when people talk about the month of autism? What is autism, Eric? In your definition, what's autism? Hmm. If you were talking to me in the kitchen and, and and you said to me, hey, Lily, what's a brain injury? I'm like, oh, my God, that can go in so many different directions. I could tell you how my brain injury operates, <laughs> um, how it impacts my life. But what's what's autism to you? To me, it's more like the scientific term of this is what this is scientifically. What it is to different people kind of varies. It, there are like different spectrums of it. There's Ashburn. Asperger's and like other names for it, and mm -hmm. it varies. Mm -hmm. But I would mostly go towards the kind of doctor or scientific definition of it for the most part, because that is the most accurate way of going about it. So I'd like to do something with you because you are the pro and not me, right? I, so I want to I want to tell you some stuff that I heard, and you can tell me, eh. Yes, no, sure. good, bad, blah, whatever. Okay. Okay. So here are some of the things. So we're going to do this with all of you audience. We have someone here who actually is living, journeying, I mean, going to college, doing all of his thing. Um, yeah. He doing it all. He doing it all. Um, and also is a tío. He's an uncle as well. Um, so one of the sentences that I heard was, all autistic people will not make contact. All autistic people will not make eye contact. True or false? Mm. I'd say that is fairly true. I imagine there's like that one ten percent where it's like they they still can. Like I mostly try to maintain eye contact because it is respectful to do that. But there are times where it's like when someone makes eye contact with me that I'm not talking to them specifically, I will just like, okay, I just go back to what I was doing. Or it's just weird timing. It's like, oh, they look at me. I look back to what I was doing. Hmm. Very good. And so I had another person say, and this is in the research that I was doing, um, autistic people tend to not like have, have fun. They tend to keep to themselves. I'm like, have they met Eric? <laughs> is this something that you have experienced? Uh, yeah. Keeping keeping to yourself is kind of accurate because you don't like have some of them may not have developed those social cues like either early on or until later in life. It only it ultimately depends on how much they have developed. Um, they can be social. That is a thing mm -hmm. to say. It's just all of them don't like to do things is it's a fairly ignorant statement but if you only know like a few autistic people and that was the consistent thing i can understand where that assumption comes from so you have that empathy for other people who don't have the knowledge or the experience to say yeah you probably have not been exposed enough to even make a good yeah, if you, yeah if you haven't been exposed to it i don't entirely blame you because like, you're not exactly going to know right off the bat that this person has this and this. And if they do, you may or may not know what to, how to entirely go about it. So let's tell me a little bit about this. When you are at work, because you're, you're a working man, is this something that you find? When you talked about social cues, this is like, you know, I'm, I'm entering into a conference in two weeks from now because they want me to speak about brain injury. And I'm sharing this, the, the stage with two other brothers who have autism. 
and they're in different um, sides of the spectrum. But um, when they talk about um, the spectrum, do you find yourself having conversations with people of, you know, there's many, many levels here. There's just not one side. So, oh, so you're asking if I just go up and have conversations to people or they come up to me? They come up ask, to you. Do people oh, they come, come up, up to, to me. Okay. Yeah, I found, I found my uh, tongue tied today. I find people coming up to me for one reason or another is like, hey, can you help with this? Can you do with that? Or do you need help with this? It's like, that is a little easier. So I have a basic basis to jump off of in terms of a conversation. Do where you... it goes. Oh, on. No, no, go ahead. Finish your thought. I want you to finish your thought. Oh, um, where it goes from there, just kind of, we cross that bridge when we get to it. I just let the conversation flow like a river. So one of the, the folks that I talked about, he said, one of the most annoying things to me is when people are disingenuine and treat me like a child and I'm a grown man. Yeah, I absolutely love that. I absolutely hate that. <laughs> it's like, if you don't know me, it's like, okay, you don't have enough information about me. It's a little bit of leeway on that. Annoying as hell, but a little bit of leeway. But after like a 10 minutes into the conversation, you should have picked up on something. Right. I'm a grown man. Don't talk to me like I'm a five-year-old who, you know, yeah, yeah they can. Yeah. So what are some of the, the things that you wish that people would integrate into their vocabulary or be moved from their vocabulary when they speak about autism? Mm. I know I gave you like notion there. Um, I know you want the letter C to be eliminated, and I love that conversation. And that's, so that's that. a different whole. Oh, that's a whole different thing. I just think that's a needless letter. We have S K Q. We don't need C. <laughs> I love like, that. All joking aside, I, that's actually a tough one because not the arbiter of how people talk. That so, is very, that's very kind. I, yeah, I never really thought about it. It's more of a, you should know better than to say this if you have this information. Just learn how to talk to people. Best advice I can give on that. Learn how to talk to people. So I'm going to translate a little bit in Spanish because we do have a community. You know how we do. You being, yeah. you being a reek in yourself. Um, right. It's right. So... Estamos hablando con un joven, un hombro de 26 años, guapísimo, como ustedes lo ven aquí. Um, él se llama Eric Allers. Él es, también, se identifica como autista y habla claramente de que él camina en su vida no pensando en que es autista. Y eso no es lo primero que sucede en la cabeza de él. Pero que tiene claro que no todo el mundo ha tenido la experiencia de trabajar e interactuar o hablar con todo el mundo. Yo le digo a él que una de las cosas que he escuchado anteriormente es que son las personas a veces los tratan como si fueran niños. Y eso es súper es frustrante que un hombre de 26 años, tú le estés diciendo, hola, Eric, ¿cómo estás? ¿Cómo te sientes? Él dice, no, 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 no. no. Pero que sí le va a dar espacio a una persona que no lo conoce tanto que como una persona que ya conozca. So, edúquese, señores. Edúquense mucho lo que puedan y compartan con su gente. Being autistic, um, Eric, are there things that are concerning to you? So one of the things that I've learned, and you tell me if this works for you, is structure. For me, is really important as someone who has a brain injury. I like structure. Like I get up in the morning, I have a schedule, I made a list, I have things, I have tasks, I have goals um, that, I, that keep me, you know, focused. Do you yeah. find yourself in the structure world or do you find yourself that you can just, let's just do what we got to do? I'd say structure helps a lot. It kind of keeps a flow of what you want, can lead to some monotony, but after a certain point, you can't complain when something, when a monkey wrench gets thrown in, or at least you shouldn't complain to when a monkey wrench gets thrown in because the world's kind of unpredictable. Like, a, you could have, like, all the days of your car is clean. Then that one pigeon decides, hey, there's a free toilet here. 
Hey, why, why are you talking about my car? Did you see it this morning? <laughs> <laughs> Was that this morning? Um, so when people talk to you, obviously you come from Puerto Rican parents. Okay, yeah. you are um, raised in this Puerto Rican family. Do people expect different things from you because you come from a Puerto Rican family of the way that they've treated you? Because I have met your dad and and the same way I ask you to sit down, I appreciate it if I can ask your father to sit down sometimes um, yeah. because they're very tall men, <laughs> very <laughs> tall. Um do you feel like certain people expect different things from you because you come from Latino parents, because you come from Puerto Rican parents? Mm, no, not really. I don't think I've ever gotten like that notion or that assumption from people. Like that probably ultimately depends on the person or like, or to maybe a lesser extent intent. Mm, intent. So, being being autistic when you are making friends i hear that you have really good friends i hear that you know you have you have your crew you got your crew is it is it harder for you to make friends with people who are identified as non-autistic or is it um, open game it's fairly open game again when it comes to people who have autism it's going to be different for everyone i went from not really talking much but the moment i can get a conversation going and i can oh you have a subject that i like i can talk about it and i can work from there but it's not hard it ultimately depends on how things go but again me specifically so I, I hear that you've had the support of your parents and I know how much your parents love you. I mean, like we've, yeah. we've had this conversation. We're parents. So we talk about our babies, yeah. you know, like their math pieces. Um, wait, you, you did a really good job at, at teaching us, you know, dad, this part and mom did that part. And you have it very clear that they were both and then they continue to be both very important participants in your life. Yeah. What do you think that probably, in your opinion, of course, what do you think that mom did to ensure that the school knew that there was an active parent, okay, and that this parent was going to ride with their child 100%? Oh, oh that one, she was most, that's mostly her just going to the school. And since she knows that I'm on the spectrum, she would talk to the teachers um talk to whoever she had to say hey my child needs this this and this due to this situation he's not going to react well to this or this is probably gonna be the meanest way i'm gonna put it it basically talks talks or talks like oh this there's this science experiment that goes this way it doesn't react well to this not, oh, not not to be mean about it. That's oh. probably the best way I can go about it. That is that is a good way. Basically lay out data of how I am. So this is my baby. And let me tell you about my baby. Pretty and, much. Yeah. Let me tell you about my baby. And so for all of you who are out there and can give, you know, our girl Wanda Allers, if you did not know, this is her son. A grown man's son. He's like, yeah, she had to put my mother out there. Um, and let's not forget your father, Luis. Yeah. Let's talk a little. Yes, and we can't forget him. God, you know, yeah. <laughs> this is just we, we don't want to do that. So you've had two very involved parents. What do you think are the when you're talking to other people who may not have the same blessing that you have had to have had both parents or to have had parents who really are saying, baby, we love you. Um, we going to rock this with you. We gonna, you know, do whatever it is to do. And you're, you know, you're our son. That's it. End of story. Yeah. Um, do you find that other young people are almost lovely, jealous of even being in your position to say, I can't even talk to my parents about this. I don't think my parents even know um, how to deal with me or I'm an oddball or X, Y, Z. Do you have those conversations mm -hmm. where people look at you and say, Hey, 
Not really, because a lot of the friends I have, if they do have like parental situations, they won't bring it up unless context is important. Like that's not something we just kind of lay on the table unless a this needs to be talked about. Then how is that decision made? Mm. Right, like that's that's a I, tough I am- one. That ultimately depends on the circumstances of the conflict you're in. Say, so, hey, where is this coming from? Where are you? Um, like, why are you doing the way you do? Is everything okay? You just gotta learn to ask the right questions every now and again. Okay, so teach me how to ask some good questions. So, if I meet someone who might be autistic, may not be autistic. First, Lily, don't do. <laughs> Please do not. Yes, tell me. Tell me. Uh, Please don't do this one. What are some of the things that you go, oh, my God, I can't believe they just said that, or I can't believe they just did that? Uh, okay, so, again, ultimately depends on the situation you're in. If you're in, like, a very... Like, okay, this is kind of bad, but it can be, like, fixed. Like, this person's clearly angry. I'd say first try maybe bringing down the situation of not, like, diluting its importance. More, like, calming down the situation. Give them a moment to breathe, do what they need to do. So, And once everyone is calm and we can just talk like adults... Like, we can get through this. Ultimately, I think first you need to have a level head first so Mm -hmm. things don't escalate to where we just get very needless drama. Hmm. Okay. Do you remember the first time that you were told that you were autistic? Do you remember No, I do not. No, I do not. (laughs) That's a good thing. I think that's a really good thing because it did not become that wounded feeling that some of us have gotten in our lives where we remember where we were at what time, who was in the room, all of that kind of thing. So you grow up in a family. Are there other children in your family who are identified as autistic? That doesn't mean they are not autistic. (laughs) The question is, are they Mm. identified or diagnosed as autistic? Uh, diagnosed, I think maybe some of my younger cousins, like one, maybe two of them to my knowledge. Like, but that's all I can think of right now. And do you feel different in your family? I mean, when you get in family gatherings and all of that kind of stuff, because when I'm in your presence, I, I, all I feel is Eric and I want to talk about, you know, um, everything we talk about, which is design and graphics and, you know, like what's the next movie? Art, right, the next movie, thing. art in general, storytelling. Mm-hmm. Right, storytelling. Hey, um, uh, I do feel different, but that's mainly due to stylistic choice. You could have the way my parents dress and the way my brother dress, which is a lot lighter colors, and I come out in a death metal shirt. So that's less to do with me huh. being on the spectrum more my choice in wardrobe and lifestyle. You know, I love that you bring that up because it is so important for people to understand that you are making your choices. You are, you are designing yourself. And so, yes, you will like the, those colors. Tell us a little bit. I'll tell you, I'll tell you a good one. And you probably heard this one before. So I go with, with Wanda Ellers, who's Eric's mom. Right. And we go into miss to mystic right? To the aquarium area, whatever. And they have all these swords and displays. Oh, she told this? me about this. She and told so, me about this. Right? And all these swords and she's all excited. And how tall is your mom? Four feet going on three? Like you know, like about... I'm fine with that. She's... But, but she not uh... tall. She not tall. We all know she's not tall, Eric. She's short. I know she's not tall. But I don't... She may be like four feet later in the inches, maybe. Yeah. And so she's like all excited. Oh, Eric will love these swords. Eric will love these swords. Eric will love this sword. And I'm thinking, let's get out of here. There are way too many swords. Can you explain 
to the audience why you love these swords. What it's it's a uh, it's a beautiful thing once people know it. But watching your little mama going crazy over swords was just uh, very interesting to me. Yeah. <laughs> You have seen my room. I have a total of three actual metal ones. Can't sharpen or else they'll become useless. Uh, or they'll just break in one fall. It is amazing. So what are some of your favorite hobbies? What are some of the favorite things to do? Um, your mother's already yelling at me. Really, Lily? Really? <laughs> um, see her in the comments? Really, Lily? Really? Oh, um, God. <laughs> I feel me all right. But I can just scream at her <laughs> right out the room. I can do that right now. So, what are some of the the things that you really enjoy? Okay. Um, ultimately, I like art, whether it be uh, different art forms, whether it be, of course, just pen, paper, painting, drawing, or like animation, game design, like things of that nature. I like the act of creating creation in an art form. And some of my favorites are definitely like visual storytelling, whether it be in a movie or a comic. Books. I do like books. I just gravitate more towards visual mediums, which mm -hmm. there are so books I'm trying to finish, but it taking my sweet time yeah so when people think about autism and people are talking about the month of autism or anything like that does any of that trigger you in any way impacts you in any way do you want to celebrate mm -hmm. do you want the tv to stop talking um people to move on does it do anything for you um uh, i think my stance is probably something similar to there was an interview that Morgan Freeman had about Black History Month where he... Ooh, I know where you're going, boo. Go ahead. Yeah, he ultimately says, like, he ultimately doesn't care because, what, you're going to relegate my history to a month? I love that interview. I adore that interview. It's like, bro, my autism doesn't define me. And B... Like, don't relegate it to a month. Just have a class or whatever. Have it teach it throughout the year. Why does it have to be a month? This isn't Christmas. And and Christmas can be very long for so many people. Depends but, on the culture. <laughs> Depends on the culture. If it's... Yeah. So I feel the same way you do. I feel the same way you do when they do the brain injury alliance and all of these things. I'm like, can we, can we just be a community and talk about things when we need to talk about them in the ongoing basis? So that way we're not this phenomenal thing that we have to talk about once a month or, you know, um, pack it all in, you know, in 30 days. And you really don't get 30 days It's more like 25 days, but um, in 30 days, you can't catch, all of us and you can't get all of our stories and you can't get all of our thoughts and feelings and and all of that yeah. kind of stuff so i i totally agree with you i feel the same way what do you say to the younger um folks who are now um being told in high school like i talked to several parents who either have children who are in middle school, just like you were when you were diagnosed, and in high school, yeah. and they're really struggling with the diagnosis. Parents, talk to parents. What can parents do um, to ensure that their kids hopefully have similar um, heartbeats like yours that say, this is not Eric entirely. This is something yeah. that Eric is part of. It's a neurological yeah. Um, diagnosis, just like a brain injury is for me. That's not who Lily is. I happen to have a brain injury. Right? right. That's how it happens for me. What would you say parents can do? And that you think I, your parents have done well? I think the most important thing is probably educate yourself on the scenario. Listen to doctor, psychiatrist, or whoever has given you this a professional who has given you this information, not just anyone, I'd say go to actual professionals about this. Like, pay attention to little behaviors that your kid has, see how you can adapt with that. 
and see how you can or see if they have grown any bad habits is like okay let's see if we can move away from that break that bad habit but again talk to doctors about this don't just kind of go all willy-nilly and wing it you, you can mess people up that way you surely can let's talk about some of the things that um, i was talking to a group a couple of weeks ago and they were talking about sensory issues I know that I do. For me, it's sound. Sound in. I'm not autistic. I'm talking about my brain injury. But when I was talking to these men, which I'm going to be sharing, you know, um, a stage with, I found it so fascinating that, you know, we both raised our hands when they were talking about sensory issues because there are some sounds that, depending on the day, for me, they sound so screechy and so loud mm -hmm. and that you may not even blink. And I'm going, did you not hear that? It feels like it's detonating something in the back of my head. Do you have sensory you. issues? Uh, I think the only that's a thing that's up with me is kind of touch, but that's kind of diluted in places. Like back then, I used to be uncomfortable touching things like gel. I don't like, I don't, you know, that thing that kids don't like now? Um, What's that? The putty? What is that thing called? The oh, the silly kids? putty. I know. I yeah, do, silly yeah, putty. I don't like silly putty, and I don't like that gooey thing the kids are making now. I can't. It makes me gag. My granddaughter loves to torture me, the sixteen-year-old, with it. Oh, yeah, no, I I loved those as a kid, but mm -hmm. specifically things like it was things like whipped cream of that kind. I didn't have it for a long time. Still, kind of don't. I just mix it into whatever I have, so it kind of goes down smoother. Oh, so Rosa is helping us out here in the comments. She says, slime. Yes, Rosa, I can't touch slime. My granddaughter runs, my 16-year-old granddaughter used to run around the house trying to get me to touch it. And I was like, oh, God, I can't touch that thing. I would buy everything for her to make it. But the deal was I didn't have to touch it. So there's certain things. Um, so sensory issues. Is there any music that, that you cannot listen to? Like, because it's too painful. Not because it's bad music, and Eric. <laughs> then if that's the case, no. Not, not to my knowledge, at least. Um, like, it's... If if there is any, it's mostly due to, A, I, this just isn't my cup of tea. So, sensor issues on audio, on an audio level, not really. Okay. Okay. What are some of the things that you have found that you have overcome from probably middle school to high school to now that you go, wow, that doesn't, that doesn't impact me the way it used to. Mm. Mm. Like I said before, like certain touches don't bother me as much. The, I really don't think there was that much. I was a fairly easygoing kid. Not a lot of things bothered me that much. I imagine if there is anything small, I probably forgot what it was. Like, it was years ago when I had these problems. I was a tiny thing. Were you? I was small when it happened. I don't think I had these problems in middle school. But if I were having any problems, they were probably gone somewhere before then. So do you have any... Any routine that you can't get away from? Like anything that you go, okay, this one is non-negotiable. You know, this is something I do and it needs to stay the way it is because if not, it throws me off. Me is my task list. If I don't have my task list and you see me breathing deeply, you're probably going to want to ask your mother to give me my task list because she probably stole it. And so um, it, it gives me a lot of anxiety if I don't have, you know, written down what I need to do. I was going to say, no, I do not have a task list. I just go about it. I have the reverse problem. If I want to do something, I will say, okay, I'll do this then. But there are times where either A, I sit down, start doing it in about half hour in, low attention span just kicks in and I do something else. Mm. or end up do, doing something else or 
or some outside source just kind of says, hey, you got to do this, and I don't get to it till later. So I am not losing the eye contact, but it's easier for me to read from my tablet than it is for me to read from the screen. So this is what I'm doing. So your mom says you were dead set to learn on how to ride everything from skates to bikes. So anything that had wheels, that was like your thing, mom says. Uh, I wouldn't (laughs) say dead set. I, I don't know what was up with me as a kid. I remember I was very trial and error, and my dad just kind of said, hey, this is kind of how he learns. I'm 100% sure I felt I scraped my knees to hell any time I either learned to ride a bike or skates. So the but real I, so the one who traumatized his mom. <laughs> probably. <laughs> I love that. Um, Luis Herrera, who's my husband, who you've also met, says, let's celebrate just being human. I'm, I'm in. Yo. I'm in. Are you in? I'm in. What can we do in in our worlds, in our communities, to talk more about autism so that way people understand that there is, this is not a choice. I didn't, you know, when... Some of us are very relieved when our children um, receive a diagnosis because then we know what to address, what to work with, you know, how do we move forward? Others are terrified and still have not given their children the skills um, to develop to the best of their ability because not everybody's at the same spectrum. So you are working and you're going to college. Tell us about how does that all work into your life? Is that stressful? Is that something you chose to do? Is that something that, how does that come up? Work is something that is less stressful, more aggravating due to work being work. You don't want to do it, but you need it because you got to pay this, you got to pay that. College is stressful due to the fact that you pay for these classes, and if you fail, that money goes down the drain and that's a lot of money for a community college which shouldn't be that expensive well there's a political argument in that and i can hang in there with you for a long time because i totally agree with you that is a lot of money a lot of money Um, If if it's like a university fair enough but if it's like a small community college i'd say make it reasonable at the very least yeah, they could be reasonable. So so did you choose to go out and work? Is this something that you said one day, you know what, I got to go out there and, and, and join the workforce? Yeah, yeah, I learned, that I think I was like late high school, that A, I should get like certain summer things, so I have my own money to buy certain things. I'm not going to be able to rely on my parents for an eternity. So it's like, okay, I should get to this now. Wow, Eric, that is such, that has nothing to do with autism. That's just just a great human being to be able to say, I don't want to juice my parents <laughs> and I'm not going to be able to depend on them forever, which is I think every parent's dream that their children, at least for most of us in my crew, um, that we hope that our children will be able to be self-sufficient and be able to take care of themselves. Us being here, and us being gone. Um, talk a little bit about, you know, what it is to to go from this very, your parents love you dearly. I mean, like, I, if I hear your mother say how much she loves you one more time and your brother, I'm just going to have to faint. Just pretend I can't hear her anymore. But um, that's how much she loves you guys. She loves the entire family. She talks a lot about making sure that parents continue to engage with their children, allow them to be who they are, give them space to be who they are, uh, you know, let them socialize, let them find their own way. Do you think that that was very helpful for you that that mom and dad had it clear that they just wanted you to have a life? Yes, that is very important. Some people just need to learn that, hey, sometimes you just got to learn things on your own. If you get yeah, like if you fall down along the way, 
like that happens. Mm -hmm. You can't stop it. If you get a scrape, it happens. Bandage it up. It's not the end of the world. Everyone gets them. I love when you say that all the time. It's not the end of the world. We can keep moving. We can keep moving. What is your your advice um, for all of these? And, and I know this is a big question, so you can say, okay, Lily, we, we can't do this. But I know that you are very politically savvy. I've had this conversation with you uh, several times. I know you're well read. I know you keep up with the times. But you also have this amazing heart. Um, and I, I enjoy talking to you, genuinely enjoy talking to you. What do you see as as society and, and you know, you politics has been killing us for, you know, the past, what, 100 and something years. Right. So way before your time and my time. Uh, but what do you think we can do as a society to just be more embracing and less damaging with all these labels that we have? Uh, break down barriers. Like whether, we... whether it's like small petty things or big things, I imagine breaking barriers would actually help a lot. It's like, okay, this is where you're coming from. This is where I'm coming from. Where can we meet in the middle of this? Wait a minute. This sounds like you should be writing a book on relationships. Wait, this is the wrong show. That's another show, Eric. <laughs> How to meet in the middle, communication one-on-one, -on -one, right? Um, how do we meet in the middle? That almost sounds like a, like a proposal. Um, uh, that's, just, that's a statement I've just heard a lot in various conversations. But it's true. It's true. It is, how, can, yes. how can we have these conversations that allow us? You are also a good listener, Eric. Where did you get that from? Uh, let's see. You're a good listener. That probably came from whether it's like fight with friends or things on the outside. It's like, let's say, let's say you're watching a show, you're looking at an argument between two characters. It's okay. This one has this argument. This one has this one. Which one is valid? Are they both valid or are they both invalid? What is the context? Just apply what I've seen and learned. I would have seen and learned. Oh, I love that. I love that. I applied what I say. Well, I want to read some stuff here that people are writing so you can take it with you because it's all, all good stuff. That is a great point. Second time you take the course, you should be <laughs> at a discount of at least 15%. Yeah. Yeah. They're, we want 50% off. Um, congratulations, young man, says Wanda Reyes Dos um, for you. So it's congratulations to you, Thank not to you. mommy, not to papi, to you. So tonight you can say, papi, they said me. <laughs> mommy, they said me. It was not about you guys. Um, they are definitely um, complimenting your mom and your dad. Tell me what is, if you can, oh, Kathleen says, also a great young man. And I do want to tell you that Michael Newman, can I read this to you? Would that be okay, Eric? Oh, go ahead. Okay. It was a pleasure meeting you, young man. I love the fact that you're breaking the barriers, the stereotypes and stigma of autism. I also bought the fact that we should be informed, educated year around, not just for a month. Yeah, we're not going back to the days of, hey, people just do this and not educate themselves on things. That's how you create ignorance. A lot of problems happened. Not a history class, but still. We should have some. He also says, I would like to get to meet you someday. You're a fine, young, right head. So you are a smart man. You're a smart man. So I think all of these, all of these compliments are beautiful to hear because they're seeing, and I'm so honored. Very wise, Kathleen Sanauer says. Um, ladies and gentlemen, you are seeing the Eric that I have met. And I remember um, 
having that desire inside of me and saying, if the world that I know could see Eric would break a lot of barriers of so many kids. So many kids, so many young people who believe that once they receive a diagnosis or are or, or talked to um, and about in crowds in a certain way, think that they don't have a place in our world. It is because of the magic of Bill Gates. Magic of, I'm sorry, you want to explain that one? <laughs> I thought you would like that one. There's the many, very, yeah, there's many okay. millions of dollars behind Bill Gates, right? So many people who are brilliant minds have come out to say, I'm autistic, I'm on the spectrum, I am. I have a brain injury, I have this, I have that, and they're brilliant minds. I'm. Everybody's brain works differently. Okay, some of our brains are just social cues. Is that one hard for you? Uh, social cues is a little difficult. Just that's a bit of a hurdle because... Yeah. It also goes with the fact that people have very different social cues, so it takes a bit to adjust to that. And being Latino, mijo, we got like a hard dress. <laughs> yeah. Shit. Yeah, I, I started this on hard mode. I started that on hard mode. So. What's wrong with her? We don't know today. <laughs> Yesterday she was upset. Now this is happiness. We don't know. We don't know what's happening. It is, uh, it's extremely difficult for those social cues. I remember um, one of the things that, I don't know if this happens to you. How do you feel about physical contact? People assume that because I'm Puerto Rican, I love to hug. I like to get good hugs, but I, but I, I prefer to know you. <laughs> yeah, I'd say probably there should be a level to it. Handshakes from start should be like, yeah, that's barrier entry. That's fine. Yeah. You okay but with handshakes? I'm okay with a handshake. He's like, I just met you, dude. Like, you <laughs> no hugging. <at> least. <laughs> yeah. We gotta get some love before the hugging starts going on here. And maybe like, still. Can I, can I at least get a sentence? Maybe know how you are first before a hug. I don't know. You want to buy me a drink? Okay. Get get to that. Yeah, let's talk. Let's talk about this a little bit more. Let's talk about this a little bit more. So people continue to compliment you. Um, I am totally, um, every human is unique and all deserve to be loved and accepted as such. Eric, you are the epitome of what is possible. I'm reading without my glasses, that's bad. When we believe in ourselves, um, I do think that is so true. I do think think that you have your own light, Eric, um, that you, I hope those who are looking um, to bring into their colleges, into their communities, someone who has a good self-esteem and is very loving, um, Eric would be my first candidate. He would definitely be my first candidate. Eric, what can we we do in the community. You said breaking barriers. Give me a couple that we can break. Or right, tell me, tell me things that you've heard that you go, oh, oh, I screech every time I hear somebody say that. Um, what are things that we think we think are true? And then you go, that's not true. I don't know what they're talking about. Mm, I'm probably gonna need some examples on that one because off the top of my head. Fair enough. What is a barrier that you think we can break? So one of the biggest ones for me was that people thought when I had my brain injury that I was not going to be able to be 100% who I used to be. To be honest with you, I'm glad that I'm not who I used to be because I have a lot more, my brain is a lot more open to change now than it was before my brain injury. So now if I have to clean a house, paint, move from there to do something else, I'm okay with that. That my ego before I got sick would have had a little bit of trouble transitioning. Right yeah. now, I don't have that ego issue. Not on that one anyway. Mm -hmm. What are some of the barriers that you'd like to see 
Is it literature? Is it TV? Would you like to see more people representing uh, the community um, as autistic actors and lawyers and teachers and um okay so when it comes to at least representation i'd say don't make it like a very big deal and if you're writing an autistic character don't do not put it at the forefront i i positively loathe when they do that one of the i think best examples i've seen of autistic representation at least in a show or not show a movie i think there was like a Power Rangers movie in like 2016, 17, that their version of Billy was this um autistic kid, and it's never uttered. There are little things, and even in like the deleted scenes, you could tell he has it. Little just tiny things, but never call attention to. And if you're gonna call to attention somewhere, at least subtlety will get you a long way. Don't make it a whole thing. Don't make it the center yes. of the character. Just make yes. it a thing of the character. It, right? It's 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 a quirk it's who is there. Probably, quirk? quirk is probably the simplest way you could put it. Like a character quirk. I like that. I like that a lot. So new things that you want to do. Tell us, you know, you you are working. Um, I know that you soon are going to be on the road with the rest of us. Um, on the road between the green, red, and what's the other color? Yellow. <laughs> Again, I put me off. I have not heard that song either, ever, or in a millennia. I just made it up. I'm talking okay. about the traffic light. I'm You're going to be I'm up there with me. On, I'm thinking of the song On the Road Again. That's why. It's true. It's from the, um, see, I'm trying to mess with him. I, I just want you guys to see the Eric that I get to like laugh with. Um, he tickles me. He corrects me. He says, do you know? And I'm like, oh, no, 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 no. Don't tell me that. Like he has promised not to tell me about Avatar Part 2 until he sees it. I haven't seen it. I'm probably so not going to see it. I didn't like the first one. <laughs> see? And so we get to talk about this a lot. So I'm like, no, 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 no. Don't tell me. He's like, don't worry. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it. I'm not going to tell you anything about it. What are the, what are the plans? Uh, in terms of plans, right now I'm working on getting my driver's license. I'm going to be taking two camping trips along the way. Like one is just going to be like regular family thing. Other is I was invited to a camping trip all the way to Maine. Maine is lovely. Lobster is dirt cheap there. Oh, we love us have some lobsters. That's for uh, sure. I remember actually making the lobster and buying it. Uh, it. It was lovely. I just wish I brought the cap. Darn it. That sounds good. We there thought a... we had the cap, too. <laughs> there is a question here, um, and oh, the sure. question comes from my husband. And um, I think it's because he had an experience that he was very conflicted by. So oh, sure. the question is for you. He says, Eric, how do you feel about being introduced as... This is Eric. Let's see. If he was introduced as meet Eric, he's autistic versus just meet Eric. Meet Eric would be just, it would be fine on both. A, that's accurate. And B, messes up the grammatical flow of he's autistic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like, why would you say that to someone? Right. Well, so that's, we, a, that's a little out of nowhere. Yeah, like if you would say, "Hey, this is this is Lily, my mother's friend. We all know her brain is screwed up." So, um, what is that thing you have, Lily? Again, <laughs> um, yeah, I think no. the tone of that is probably also a big factor because, mm -hmm. like, how we met is like, oh, that was the worst possible time I could have done that. But I did it anyway. Anyone got a chunk out of it, but it was a natural flow to the sentence. Because I was introduced as the second son. 
<laughs> I wasn't going to bring it up, Holmes. You're the one bringing it up. I'm not giving full context. I'm leaving that to your imagination. <laughs> yeah, the first time I met Eric, it was, a, it was a delicate situation, but he just made me laugh, and I just had to find my composure. What can I tell you? In instantly, he made me laugh, and it was just not the right time for right me to laugh. There. It was a low-hanging fruit just right in front of me. I wanted fruit salad. And I was like, oh my God, I can't laugh, not right now. But he surely made me laugh. Um, tell me, if you had the magic wand, and I asked this, so we have to use our, our imagination. Well said. Well said. Um, well said. Um, how, if, you, if I gave you the magic wand, if one existed, and you could change one thing in the world, what would it be? Oh, I think, I, yeah, I think I told you about this. Um, I think I would just delete notions of, uh, or the, um, yeah, the notion or, oh, what was the word? The idea of race, like you have American, Italian, Puerto Rican, like all that's gone, we're just human. Any differences in like skin colors just due to hey, you were on this part of the world. I want to be part of that planet. If you make it happen, I will come and join you. Hopefully, you know, I don't care if I'm 98, if God gives me the grace to be 98, who knows? Um, I would love to live in a place where it just matters that we are human. I love that you've utilized that. And we you did say that to me. I do remember that. Eric, I I can't think of someone who can be a better example right now than you can for our next generation and for the growing generation. Do you ever find yourself um, helping younger people who are probably struggling? Um, because they believe they're autistic, because somebody told them they were autistic, because there's nasty words attached to autistic. Um, you know, there's all kinds of things that we hear all the time. Like I, like I said, I have a brain injury and people say, well, oh, she might have psychiatric issues. Uh, yeah, it's called the neurological <laughs> disease. Uh, that's kind of how it works, you know? Uh, I take some meds, I take some treatment, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's, it does, it's not... I'm not crazy, um, but there is a lot of stereotypes out there. Do you find yourself talking to younger people or younger people getting closer to you and saying mm. anything? Ultimately, it depends on circumstances. If I go to work, if I'm like at my mom's job and they um, end up talking to me, it's like I'll be like, hey, what's your name? Just strike up a conversation. Read him as an individual. Not a hard notion. Well, this is, um, Eric, you have to come. Will you come back? Where? Here to the, to, to oh. Lily Sin Barreras. Will you come back and join us? You think you'll yeah, come back? <laughs> Maybe at some point. I don't know what the future holds. He's like, yeah, I don't know if I like you that much. I'll, I'll, t I'll tell you when I see you next time. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not a lost elder god. I don't I don't know what's going to happen between now and now and now next week. Wouldn't it be nice if we all adopted that? Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens. Lots of people here are showing you admiration. They're congratulating you. Um, oh, well, thank you. Yes, fuel my already growing ego. <laughs> yes. Your mom is going to have to deal with that and dad not me. Oh, 100%. <laughs> They're going to be punished by this. Not me. Um, Eric, um, from the bottom of my heart, I am honored, truly, truly honored that you decided to, to come on Lily Sin Barreras. It is my mission to remove barriers. It is my mission to have conversations. It is my mission to have multi-generational conversations. Um, it is my mission to have women and men um, and however people identify to have conversations so we can be part of that human nation that we all belong to. Uh, thank you for having me.
I love him. What can I tell you? Ladies and gentlemen, con ustedes, esta noche, don't go anywhere. Don't go anywhere. Esta noche, you have heard from the new upcoming magic that's going to happen. You're going to see his stuff on TV, I promise you. You got his, Some of us are going to be buying stuff. I don't know. What would they be by then? Will they be like little chips that we put in our computers, the movies? I don't uh, know. What, they, what do you think I they'll bet. be like? I imagine we're still going to go on what we have now for a good while. By the time we get, like, a Matrix-style future or anything from any sci-fi, a good bit of us are probably going to be dead by then. <laughs> he is not holding back any punches, but I'm going first, buddy. You stay here and take care of business, Okay. Uh, you just show up to my funeral. Make sure I have earrings on. Those things are very important to me. So you say, Mom, does she have earrings on? That's the only thing I <laughs> promised her she would have. <laughs> earrings on. Um, for everybody who's here, you know that you take $50 home. So tell me, what did Eric... Oh, you guys are going to have fun. Uh, what did Eric say that inspired you, motivated you, or made you go, we're going to be all right if we have more Eric's in the world? You got... Two minutes to do that. Oh, my God. Okay. Um, two minutes to do that, and you can take $50 home, courtesy of our sponsors. And the reason why we do this is to just give you a small token of appreciation for following us um, on all of our social media, um, subscribing to our YouTube channel, taking the message that every life, every heartbeat matters. Everyone matters. And not until we decide that we, we, we are a we, we are going to be very lonely and we're going to fight each other to the ground. Um, oh, oh, wow. Thank you. Great show. Thank you for sharing. God bless you, Eric. Thank you, Eric, for sharing with us tonight. Um, Eric, do you speak Spanish? Here's a question for you. Oh, that is. Oh, I'm trying to avoid this one. Boy, you like the plague. Um, I'm still learning. My don't do not ask me how I got by in a Spanish-speaking family. I learned to respond. It speaking it has been a pain because I was in situations where I mainly spoke English, and the language just left me. <laughs> Wanda Reyes says, "Thank you, Eric. You are a true blessing." So. Uh, Thank you. So they tell me here that what the team is going to do of sponsors is that they would like to make a donation to a charity of your choice. Mm -hmm. And what charity would that be, Eric? Off the top of my head, I have no idea. Don't you love him? Like there's no dishonesty with this guy. Well, you get back to I wasn't to expecting <laughs> half of this. What am I going to say? Like, Do you know absolutely. what I found fascinating? I was like, he is not asked to have a conversation with me. None of that. I'm not bugging him. I'm not doing any of that. And I had a great time. Did you have a good time? I had a very good time. Yeah, he was not too excited. Try it again. Just lie to me and say, <laughs> <laughs> just lie, man, and say, I had the best time of my life. But it, but it, oh, yes, I had a spectacular time. Now watch as I just leave to just play water polo with, uh, with the creatures that I possess. Is <laughs> that enough of a lie for you? <laughs> I love that one. And it's recorded, so I might be able to use it other times when nobody likes me. Uh, God bless you. God bless you. God bless uh, you. God bless you. God bless you. Um, I really, really enjoyed this. This was a lot more fun than I expected. I really admire you. Um, as a young man, I am honored to be able to be part of your circle for how long or short, um, God allows me to. And, um, I know, I know, like I know I'll be buying your movies pretty soon. We love you, uh, Eric. Thank you. See you soon. To all of you, see you next Sunday, Lo Bel Domingo Proximo. Bro, how do you uh, like all those R's, man? How do you like all those R's? Uh, Proximo. Um, uh, a adios. todos ustedes.
Adiós. Buenas noches, mi gente. Los vemos el domingo que viene. Y acuérdense que todo lo que pasa en nuestro cerebro es importante discutirlo con personas que de verdad saben lo que está pasando. No todos somos iguales y esa es la bendición de Papá Dios. Remember, not all of us are the same. Our brains don't work the same. Our bodies don't work the same. We're just magical. And that's what makes us different. The one thing that unites us is the land where we all want to live with Eric, the human land. Good night, everybody. I'll see you next Sunday. Good night, Eric. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Buenas noches, mi gente.